The opening ceremony is over and the Pyeongchang Winter Games are about to begin in earnest. But as John Yang reports, among the most closely watched early Olympic events is global diplomacy. Fireworks opened the Olympic Games in Pyeongchang, but competed for attention with a diplomatic spectacle. A historic handshake between South Korean President Moon Jae-in and North Korea's nominal head of state, Kim Jong-nam, at a welcoming reception. The greeting served to underscore the apparent divisions between Washington and Seoul. Vice President Pence made a brief appearance, too, alongside Moon and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. But he avoided the North Korean delegation and left early. The Wall Street Journal's Andrew Jung is covering the games. Uh, the conservative media here uh, are interpreting this as a snub. Uh, other outlets are being careful because uh, it still isn't really clear what message uh, the vice president was trying to uh, put out there. During the opening ceremony, Mr. Pence sat just feet away from Kim Yo-jong, the powerful sister of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. She's the first member of the North's ruling family to set foot in South Korea. Mr. Pence again kept his distance, but South Korea's President Moon greeted her as the two countries' athletes marched side by side under a single flag. Later, a North Korean hockey player was among the Olympic torchbearers. It was a striking show of unity after a year of rising tensions over Pyongyang's missile and nuclear programs. The Olympics are often an escape from world affairs. This year, the geopolitical subtext is hard to avoid. South Korean President Moon sees the games as a chance to thaw relations with the North. He met with Vice President Pence yesterday. I would like to make efforts by using this opportunity as much as I can to bring North Korea back to the dialogue table. I always emphasize that the most important thing in this process is the airtight cooperation between South Korea and the United States. Mr. Pence has emphasized the Trump administration's harder line, warning against what he calls the North's charm offensive. He used his own symbolism today, meeting with defectors from the North, along with Fred Warmbier, whose son Otto died last year after imprisonment in North Korea. The vice president reinforced the U.S. view of North Korea in an interview with NBC's Lester Holt. We're going to make it crystal clear that our military, uh, the Japanese self-defense forces, our allies here in South Korea, and all of our allies across the region are, are fully prepared. Uh, military to defend, options. Well, to defend our nations and to take what is action is necessary to defend our homeland. Andrew Jung of the Wall Street Journal says Japan is also taking a tougher stance than the South Koreans. President Moon is saying, yeah, it's kind of the time for talks because otherwise um, it's denuclearization is never going to happen. But Japan is saying more pressure. Um, I think that is, in, that is more aligned to what the Trump administration is thinking. The split will be evident again tomorrow when President Moon hosts the North Korean delegation for lunch. And Mr. Pence will be in Seoul preparing to return to Washington. We now get two views of this Olympic diplomacy. Anthony Ruggiero worked in the State Department and the Treasury Department. His focus was on fighting the financing of terrorism and weapons of mass destruction. And Frank Januzzi, also a State Department veteran, he was part of the U.S. delegation for talks with North Korea during the Clinton administration. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Thanks for being here. Mr. Januzzi, let me start with you. Did Vice President Pence miss an opportunity here by not engaging with the North Koreans, even just pleasantries? He did. Uh, his behavior was boorish and politically tone deaf. Uh, if uh, President Moon Jae-in can shake hands with Kim Jong-nam, if our close ally Shinzo Abe, the leader of Japan, can shake hands, surely the Vice President can do the simple courtesy uh, of not uh, essentially showing up to the party and then sulking. Uh, Mr. Ruggiero, uh, boorish and tone deaf? Yeah, I'm not sure I would go that far. I think that, you know, we have to keep the focus here on North Korea and its uh, nuclear weapons and missile programs, and they have no interest in talking to the United States. So whether the vice president really shakes his hand is, is really immaterial. I mean, the, the issue here is that North Korea is the one that really wants to take over or hijack these games to legitimize its regime. But I think it's precisely because we want to keep the focus on North Korea, its horrendous human rights record, its, its poor record in response to UN sanctions uh, for their missile and nuclear programs, that the president, uh, the vice president made such a grievous mistake. He's made himself the story. Uh, he's made himself and his treatment of our South Korean ally the story. 
uh, the South Koreans held these Olympics, they're holding these Olympics with an aspiration of peace and, and really beginning a process of reconciliation and dialogue with the North. And for the United States to in any way obstruct that uh, effort, I, th I think is really doing a disservice to our alliance. Well, Mr. Ruggiero, you say that the, the North Koreans are trying to hijack these Olympics. Should the South Koreans have said to when uh, uh, Kim Jong-un said he was going to send his sister thanks but no thanks? Definitely. I mean, she's a sanctioned person. Uh, she's involved in North Korea's propaganda to its own citizens. I mean, she is complicit in this regime's horrible human rights record. I and mean, frankly, the North Koreans should not even be participating in these Olympics. You know, during apartheid, South Africa was not invited to the Olympics. North Korea should not be given the same courtesy, or it should be, you know, subjected to a ban as well. And it's not clear to me why we would want to invite a country like this to the Olympics. Well, I strongly disagree. Again, Anthony, uh, sanctions are a means to an end. They're not an end in of themselves. And the only reason we have sanctions on North Korea, it's not just to punish them, it's to change their behavior. Uh, so when you have an opportunity to engage, when you have an opportunity to use the leverage created by sanctions uh, to possibly explore openings uh, to address the hard security issues and the, the north-south issues, we should seize it. Well, I, I mean, I agree we should change their behavior, but let's not forget they did a military parade only two days ago. That, does, that hasn't changed their behavior, and even though they're not doing missile or nuclear tests, their missile and nuclear programs continue even as we speak today. So they have not changed their behavior at all, and I would just say Things like prohibiting South Africa from the Olympics are what eventually got the change in behavior we were looking for. I think what, what got South Korea to the, uh, South uh, Africa to the table were severe economic sanctions. And, right. and I certainly support those efforts to impose uh, tough economic sanctions on North Korea. Uh, but uh, a military parade in Pyongyang is not a threat to us. And Mr. Pence also took with him Fred Warmbier, the father of Otto Warmbier, the, the, the college student in prison in, in North Korea came home to America in a coma and eventually died. He took him to a meeting with uh, North Korean defectors. Do you think that was too aggressive, Mr. Januzzi? Well, look, when I was at Amnesty International, I, I led efforts here in Washington to try to shine a spotlight on North Korea's horrendous human rights record. And, and I, I celebrate President Trump's efforts to put the human rights issue on the table. But there's a time and a place for everything. And if we're going to nurse grievances, uh, at the Olympics, rather than try to uh, seize this opportunity uh, to create a mood for reconciliation, I think that's a mistake. Uh, the timing of it is wrong. Uh, the sentiment is, I think, very well met, well intentioned uh, and and uh, laudable. Mr. Ruggiero, bad timing. No, absolutely not. I mean, we should be focused on North Korea's human rights record and bringing Fred Warmbier, I think, is the right approach by the administration. We need to continue to shine this spotlight. It's, un it's disappointing that South Korea's own uh, president, who's a human right former human rights lawyer, is not as focused on this as President Trump is. So I think it's, I think it's admirable that, that President, uh, Vice President Pence did that. Mr. Ruggiero, you say that you, th you feel that the North Koreans are trying to drive a wedge between South Korea and the United States. How real do you think that wedge is and what are the consequences? Well, I mean, the conversation we're having here, I mean, this is, this is what Kim Jong-un wants. Uh, I think they want uh, a wedge between the United States and South Korea. The other thing that they want is to sabotage the sanctions program. Uh, it's finally showing some success. I think Kim Jong-un has, has felt that pressure, and he knows that if he's talking to South Korea, that it will be harder for the United States to go to countries and ask them to do things above the letter of the law, which is really what we need on the sanctions program, what we've seen so far. And I agree, Anthony, that the sanctions are beginning to show mm -hmm. some traction, and that's precisely why uh, we should be uh, pursuing uh, the opportunities that may exist to pivot uh, from the sanctions, explore what's possible, see if the North Koreans have changed their attitude. If not, that's fine. Keep the pressure on. Frank Janusi and Anthony Ruggiero, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.